I'll divorce this useless Cindy. She can't have children. I'll marry a younger, cuter woman as I was just recovering from an ovarian removal surgery. Vin suddenly stood up from his chair, interrupting the doctor's words with a loud laugh. Both the doctor and I were taken aback, looking up at Ben in surprise. I've already got a cute girl. Anyway, I'll have her bear my children. Ben declared as he pulled out divorce papers from his bag, apparently prepared since my diagnosis. Hearing this, I felt utterly foolish. I understand. Glad you're being reasonable, Ben, I managed to say. With these words, Ben sat back down and urged the doctor to continue the conversation. The doctor glanced at me before beginning to speak. Actually, what did you say? The doctor's shocking statement turned Ben's face pale. Watching him, I shouted in my heart, serves you right. My name is Cindy Miller, a 35-year-old housewife. I used to work as an office clerk but quit my job when I got married. As a full-time housewife, I do household chores and sell crafts I make as a hobby online. I met Ben, my husband, at our workplace. It all started when I took care of Ben, who got drunk at a company year-in party. He thanked me by inviting me out to dinner, and after a few dates, we started going out. Ben, being in sales, was very persuasive. I always felt happy around him, and he gave me strength even during hard times. So when he proposed, I accepted with great joy. Planning the wedding was hard, but it was a happy time. Ben's family consisted of his parents and an elder brother. His father was a very kind man, always giving me my favorite sweets and money for meals out with Ben. I only met Ben's elder brother Daniel once, but he seemed very kind. Daniel's wife was also polite, and I wanted to get along with them. In contrast, Ben's mother openly disliked me. Every time we met, she glared and made snide remarks, naturally. I didn't care for her and tried to avoid meeting her as much as possible. However, Ben didn't seem to like my attitude and often tried to bring us together. After we got married, when I expressed my dislike, Ben would get angry and yell, Are you disrespecting my mother? I tried to avoid meeting her by making excuses, like wanting to spend anniversaries just with him. Then, one day when Ben and I went out to eat, his mother was waiting at the restaurant. I turned pale and looked at Ben. You invited your mother. I thought you'd be happy. I said I wanted to spend it just with you, right? It was my birthday, and I desperately argued with Ben. He looked down on me with annoyance. How long are you going to be so stubborn? Even my mom is trying to get along. Aren't you being a bit too presumptuous for a daughter-in-law? Ben's words felt like a blow to my head, and I was so shocked. I could feel tears welling up just thinking about it, but I fought the urge to cry. Don't cry. Ah, what a hassle. It's awful. I was looking forward to it. I mumbled to myself. Ben began to yell in frustration, So what? You want me to send my mother away now? In the end, it was me who had to back down as people passing by started to notice us. Fine, I was wrong, all right? As long as you understand. Come on, mom is waiting. Let's go, Ben said, satisfied with my apology. He took my hand and led me to his mother, but what followed was terrible. I was forced to sit next to his mother, who complained about every dish. She smirked and commented whenever I ate, saying things like, Cindy, your upbringing seems poor. You seem to lack manners. Each time I asked where I went wrong, she just smirked and never answered. Ben only laughed. What am I doing wrong, Ben? You don't know that's why she's saying that, I pleaded. Each mocking comment shrunk my heart, and I felt like crying. My special birthday was ruined. I forced myself to eat the tasteless French meal, and the cake brought out by the restaurant was also ruined by my mother-in-law, who took center stage, making it seem like her birthday. The situation didn't change until we left, and I had the worst birthday ever. Unable to calm down, I confronted Ben when we got home, but he just frowned. Can't believe you're not happy even though my mom came, but your mother was ungrateful. How dare you, a mere daughter-in-law? Ben shouted again. The argument lasted until morning, only ending when Ben was satisfied. I'm going to sleep. Make sure the house is clean. He abruptly ended the conversation 
and went to the bedroom alone. I was left feeling utterly drained. Yet, I went on to do the household chores. Since I became a full-time housewife, Ben never did any housework. Whenever I asked him for help, he would make a displeased face and often retort, you're just a housewife after all. Three years into our marriage, I stopped asking for help, and it became an unspoken rule. Work was Ben's responsibility, and housework was mine. Hey, I think it's about time we had a child. Yes, can't you get pregnant yet? I was puzzled by Ben's way of speaking. Our intimate moments were infrequent but regular. However, his words implied that I was the reason we couldn't conceive. Do you think it's my fault we can't have a child? I asked. What else could it be? Ben's blunt accusation angered me. I had undergone a bridal check before marrying Ben, and everything was fine. This meant the problem could more likely be with Ben. I voiced this possibility, and the next moment, I found myself on the floor. You don't joke around. The problem has to be with you. Ben's voice echoed in the living room. I looked up at him, holding my stinging cheek, blaming your husband when it's your fault for not getting pregnant. What terrible wife. I'll get my mother to scold you too. Be prepared, he declared. Ben made a phone call to his mother in front of me, and she was coming over immediately. He looked down at me smirking. What do you mean the problem is with my son? How dare you say that when you're being supported by him? As soon as my mother-in-law entered our house, she slapped my cheek. The slap from Ben and now this. Both cheeks were stinging and tears welled up. Honestly, a woman who can't admit her own faults should be returned, can't even have a child. What a defective product. Her harsh words infuriated me, and I glared back at her. She then screamed at me in a shrill voice. How disrespectful. Fine, let's get a test done. Once we find out it's your fault, we'll get a divorce and demand alimony. Be ready for that. Understood. I nodded in response to her words. Ben seemed a bit displeased. But his mother persuaded him, and he agreed to the tests. We made an appointment at the nearest university hospital. On the day of the examination, my mother-in-law barged into our house, intending to accompany us to the fertility tests and hear the results together. Ben, though reluctant, accepted her company at the hospital. Ben and I were directed to different areas for the examination. Since my bridal check showed no issues, I was confident about this test too. I was expecting a result indicating no abnormalities, but the doctor's words shocked me. There's a tumor, we need to operate immediately. While receiving a calm explanation about the surgery, my world went dark. My mother-in-law listened intently next to me, but her expression showed no concern. Doctor, does this mean my daughter-in-law can't get pregnant anymore? She asked. No, she can still conceive after removing one ovary. However, the chances of natural pregnancy will decrease by about 30%, the doctor explained. My mother-in-law reacted exaggeratedly to this explanation, glanced at me and sighed. I was looking forward to a grandchild. Such a pity, but the surgery is the priority now. Yes, let's proceed with the surgery. I faced the surgery still unable to comprehend the situation. After hearing the explanation, Ben, without waiting for his test result, said, See, I'm not at fault, and went out to drink. The fact that he went drinking without a word of concern for his wife, undergoing surgery, confirmed my belief that he no longer loved me. Perhaps it wasn't as painful because I had somewhat sensed it. I went into surgery alone. It went smoothly and was successful. The wound hurt, but there were no other issues. While alone in the hospital, I received a message from Ben. It only mentioned house chores piling up and to not forget to apply for insurance. There wasn't a single word of concern in his message, and I felt my affection for Ben fading. Then, during a post-surgery checkup, the doctor told me a surprising fact. The doctor tried to inform Ben of his test results, but he had left without hearing them. I asked the doctor not to tell him yet, and to share the news in the final checkup before my discharge where Ben would be present. The doctor agreed to my request and kept the results from Ben. There was no contact from Ben, nor did I hear anything from my mother-in-law. 
Despite the tense atmosphere, my hospital stay was quiet and peaceful. I messaged Ben, asking him to come only on the last day, the day of my discharge. Ben unusually came early in the morning and helped with my discharge preparations. I thanked the nurses, and as I left, I couldn't help but feel that it was the last time. I was caught off guard by his words. The last time Ben mentioned it, he didn't elaborate further, so I assumed I had misunderstood and didn't press the issue. When everything was ready, Ben and I were escorted by a nurse to the doctor's office for the final consultation. Miss Miller, there were no abnormalities. Congratulations on your discharge, the doctor announced. Thank you, doctor, I replied, expressing my gratitude. Next to me, I could see Ben also thanking him as we sat on the chairs. However, the doctor was about to speak to Ben. I'll divorce this useless Cindy. She can't have children. I'll marry a younger, cuter woman as I was just recovering from an ovarian removal surgery. Ben suddenly stood up from his chair, interrupting the doctor's words with a loud laugh. Both the doctor and I were taken aback, looking up at Ben in surprise. I've already got a cute girl. Anyway, I'll have her bear my children. Saying this, Ben pulled out divorce papers from his bag. It seemed he had prepared them ever since my diagnosis was confirmed. Hearing this, I felt utterly foolish. I understand. Glad you're being reasonable, I managed to say. Ben sat down, urging the doctor to continue. The doctor glanced at me before speaking. Actually, what Ben? The doctor's shocking revelation turned Ben pale. Watching him, I silently screamed in my heart, serves you right. Ben, unable to comprehend the situation, trembled with a pale face. I sat calmly beside him. What do you mean, I'm infertile? Ben exclaimed. It's been determined that Mr. Ben has no sperm at all. Natural conception is impossible. Even infertility treatments won't help, the doctor explained. That's a lie, Ben shouted, grabbing my shoulder and glaring at me in pain. You set this up, didn't you? Is this revenge for wanting a divorce? I replied in a disdainful tone to Ben's absurd accusation. Why would I need to do such a thing? Besides, I didn't even know about the divorce until you mentioned it here. Ben slumped into the chair, muttering to himself. After a moment, he hesitantly asked the doctor a question. Doctor, is it really zero percent? Well, to be precise, it's almost impossible. Unless a miracle happens, natural conception is unlikely, the doctor responded. Ben's face lit up at those words, and he immediately started smirking. Sorry, Cindy. Seems I've made a miracle happen. What do you mean, my girlfriend? She's pregnant. Even I was shocked by Ben's words. The doctor looked just as astonished. No wonder we came as a couple to hear the news, and one of us announces the pregnancy of an affair partner. So I'm sorry, but let's get divorced quickly. I need to register my marriage with her, Ben cheerfully declared. I silently signed the divorce papers and handed them to him. I'd agree to the divorce, but I'll be discussing alimony and property division through a lawyer later, I stated. Yeah, yeah, whatever. She's cute, you know. Don't be jealous, Ben replied with exasperation. Then, we parted ways at the hospital. I went home, and Ben returned to his parents' house. Once home, I started packing immediately. I also searched Ben's study. It was as if he hadn't bothered to hide anything. I found ample evidence that he had met the other woman at a pub where she worked as a part-time worker. When I opened his computer, his messaging app was left open, revealing all their conversations and many suspicious photos. I transferred them to my phone. Normally, seeing such intimate photos of a beloved husband with another woman would bring tears, but I felt nothing for Ben anymore. In fact, I almost found it laughable. The next day, I printed out the conversations and photos from the messaging app and visited a nearby lawyer's office. The female lawyer was very kind, listened to my entire story, and agreed to take decisive action against Ben. We prepared a certified letter and sent it to Ben at his parents' house. The day the letter arrived, Ben bombarded me with calls. Reluctantly, I answered the phone. Hey, what's this? He asked. It's a certified letter, I replied. 
Not that. What's this about alimony? Although I had clearly stated this at the hospital, it seemed he hadn't listened. I explained earlier. The alimony is for your infidelity and verbal abuse, I responded. But I told you, my girlfriend's pregnant. I can't pay alimony. Isn't your girlfriend gone now? Ben gasped in my words, reacting exactly as I expected. I couldn't help but laugh. You should have told her you were married, but I'm registered with her now, so it's not an affair. That kind of self-reasoning won't work. Hearing my exasperated words, Ben became furious and started shouting. Apparently, Ben had never told his girlfriend that he was married. I was surprised when she called immediately after receiving the letter, expressing her discomfort with Ben's parents' attitude and his words. She hadn't yet submitted the marriage registration and planned to leave the house soon. I had another important thing to ask, but I decided to save it for last. For now, I only relayed two points to Ben. Ben was speechless upon hearing them. If it weren't for you meddling, I would have been happy by now. No, it's your fault for not saying anything. Ben seemed to be at a loss for words again. I spoke to him with a half smile. Anyway, I'm expecting the payments. I know it's going to be tough for you. Hey, do you know where she went? Ben, apparently in a panic, asked me that. True, I had received a call from her, but I didn't know where she went. When I told him that, Ben clicked his tongue. You're really useless. That's why you get cheated on and divorced. I don't want to be lectured by someone being sued for alimony. What? Nothing he said affected me. Instead, everything backfired on Ben, digging his own grave. His pitiful attitude made me burst into laughter. For now, let's discuss this with a lawyer present. I also need your signature on the documents. Ah, all right. I understand. Having finally obtained his agreement, I hung up the phone and lay down on the bed. It's going to get busy from here on. Thinking so, I took a deep breath. Three days later, my lawyer and I were standing in front of Ben's parents' house. It seemed more disheveled than the last time I visited. Oh, you're late. Come in quickly. She glared at us with undisguised annoyance as soon as she saw us. We're right on time. We're coming in. So cheeky. It's good you're getting divorced. She gritted her teeth as she led us into the house. In the living room, besides Ben, there was his elder brother Daniel. I wondered why I didn't see Ben's father. Isn't your father here? At my question, Ben and his mother made faces as if they had swallowed something bitter. Then Daniel explained the situation. Actually, Dad was furious with Ben and divorced Mom for defending him. I was shocked and looked at my mother-in-law. She sulkily avoided my gaze while glancing at her. Daniel continued, He's staying at my place now. He's not in good health, so he's resting at home today. He apologized for what happened to you, Cindy. I'm grateful for everything your father did for me. Daniel smiled and nodded in response. Then he looked sternly at Ben. I didn't want to come here, but with just these two, there's no talking so I decided to be here. Understanding his reason for being there, I agreed. Given my mother-in-law's reception, I didn't expect the discussion to be smooth. You're the reason Dad left. We should be the ones wanting alimony. Yeah, the pregnant wife I had left to. Aren't you a jinx? My lawyer, Daniel, and I exchanged glances and burst into laughter. My father-in-law left because he was fed up with his wife defending their unreasonable son. The new wife left because Ben, without revealing his marital status, tried to marry her. Both left due to the actions of my mother-in-law and Ben. With all due respect, you and Ben are being too self-righteous. The fault lies entirely with you in this matter. How dare you talk like that? You're just a daughter-in-law, not anymore. What? You're so petty. That's why I dislike you. Is that so? Ben looked back and forth between us, flustered. Was he always such a pathetic man? My disappointment was so profound that I felt nothing for him. Ben, you should speak up for yourself. Ben, stay quiet. I'll take care of this. You don't have to pay any alimony. She said this, defending Ben. It's pitiful for a 35-year-old to hide behind his mother. I glared at Ben, 
who obediently quieted down at his mother's words. After all your bluster, you can't say anything in front of mom. I always hated that mama's boy part of you. I am not a mama's boy. Finally responding, I decided to drop a bombshell. Did you tell your mother that you're infertile? That's enough about that. That's where it all started. Shut up. Seeing Ben's panic, I realized he hadn't told his mother. I laid out the medical reports in front of her. She turned pale as she looked at them. What is this? This is wrong. It's true that it's difficult for me, but my girlfriend got pregnant, so it's not impossible. Hearing Ben's words, his mother let out a sigh of relief and turned to me with a triumphant look. What a misunderstanding. Just because you're infertile, don't make Ben out to be impotent. Are you sure it was Ben's child she was pregnant with? My words left my mother-in-law momentarily speechless before she glared at me furiously. I presented more evidence to Ben and his mother. Here's an investigation report. It seems she was quite active around town with a history of many men. What? No. Ben snatched the report, his face turning white as he read through it. Eventually, he slumped down in defeat. The report detailed that the girlfriend had been seeing another man concurrently with Ben, married him after leaving Ben's parents' house, and that a DNA test confirmed the child was from that man. So, am I impotent? Unfortunately, it seems so. As I drove the point home, Ben burst into tears, clearly devastated by the fact. Lies. I won't be fooled. Ben can't be impotent. It's some mistake. She ripped up the investigation report in denial. Anticipating this, I produced an identical copy of the document. Annoyed, my mother-in-law glared at me. Then Daniel started to laugh. It's so funny. My brother, who always ridiculed me, is impotent. Daniel was laughing hysterically at Ben. He then took out his smartphone and showed it to Ben. I'm already the father of two kids. I let dad meet them, but I never told mom. I have grandchildren. Why didn't you tell me? Daniel looked at her coldly. Why would I? We're estranged. You remember what you did to my wife, right? Daniel recounted everything his mother had done to his wife. His wife. Who? Was his high school classmate and from a single parent family had always been criticized by his mother behind the scenes. After they married, my mother-in-law's taunts intensified, pressuring her about having children. Once she became pregnant, she confessed everything to Daniel. He confronted his mother, and they moved out, leading to estrangement. Well, she was a bit fragile mentally, so I thought I was toughening her up. I was attracted to her kindness. I wish you hadn't interfered. Shut down by Daniel, my mother-in-law grimaced, showing no sign of remorse. Daniel sighed heavily. I didn't even want to attend Ben's wedding, but Dad said Cindy was a good person, so I went. I had no idea about this. Exchange, Ben gritted his teeth in frustration. I once believed that I could change Ben, but instead, he ended up causing me pain. I've grown up, went to a better university, and earned more than you. Ben boasted with a ridiculous attitude. Daniel looked at him with pity and challenged. You don't know where I work, do you? You went to a third-rate university, so probably some small company, right? I'm the CEO here. Daniel handed Ben his business card and gave me one too. I was surprised to recognize the company. Daniel was the CEO of the company that made Ben's favorite custom suits. With all that money, you can easily pay Ben's alimony. You're his brother, after all, Daniel remarked confidently. However, Daniel refused to pay a penny, stating that Cindy wouldn't agree either. Ben's shoulders slumped upon hearing this. He turned to me with a pleading look, admitting he was wrong and wanting to start over. I made him sign the alimony agreement, ensuring the payments would be made directly by him. A month later, Ben paid the full amount of alimony, and his mother had to sell some land to come up with the money. The land sold was where Ben's parents' house once stood. Now, Ben and his mother lived together in an old apartment near their workplaces. Half of the money from the land sale went to Ben's father, leaving his mother with barely anything after paying the alimony. She spread false rumors that I swindled money from her, but those who know her character don't take her seriously. After the incident, 
Ben's life took a downturn. He started neglecting his appearance, arriving late or missing work, which led to his dismissal. His assertiveness, once an advantage, turned into a disadvantage. Since being fired, Ben has been juggling part-time jobs, but his personality prevents him from keeping them for long. His mother also works various jobs to make ends meet, but like Ben, she doesn't stick to any job for long. On the other hand, Daniel and his wife are expecting their third child this year. Ben's father is actively anticipating the birth, blending well into their family life. He has become more active than he ever was at the old family home, even going on trips. Daniel's children are affectionate, calling me auntie and showing me a lot of love. I have been hired by Daniel's company, where I design decorations for children's suits, a new line the company has started. My hobbies and crafts helped me land this fulfilling and enjoyable job. Recently, I've started dating a man I met there. He's kind, gets along well with Daniel, and is friendly with Daniel's wife. We share the same hobbies like reading and crafts, making it a regular event to enjoy these activities at each other's houses on weekends. Despite the chaos of everyday life, I'm happy and motivated. I look forward to a fulfilling life surrounded by the things and people I love.